Good morning. Today's June 2nd, 2020, and this is the Morning Breach with Scott Davis. This morning, I'm on site working the election, the polls here in Pennsylvania. So kind of I'm doing this kind of on location, but I wanted to start off today's episode with a review of major coronavirus malware versions or variants that are in the wild. So let's begin with the Android-based COVID lock ransomware. This is designed to lock your devices, contacts, pictures, and videos from your mobile devices. The device is locked. It demands a ransom of roughly 100 bitcoins within 48 hours, you know, if you ever want to see your data again. The COVID lock ransomware is typically deployed via an Android app, uh, typically a coronavirus tracker type app or a coronavirus map. Um, and it's then deployed, it's kind of hidden inside a working app that does that. Uh, it's also been typically tied to the coronavirus app dot site. So for the IT professionals on here, if you block that coronavirus app dot site, you should be able to prevent that app from at least hitting devices that are on your network. It won't do anything if they're connected to cellular. Uh, Dharma, part of Sci Crisis uh, malware family, is distributed via phishing email attachments, and the attachment one covid dot exe is most likely the file name that's attached to those emails. Uh, you have emotnet, E-M-O-T-E-T, -E malware, is a phishing email which contains a warning note and call to action to download an attached Word document which contains a macro script, which once you enable the macro, it runs in the background deploying the emotnet, E-M-O-T-E-T, -E malware, and extracts data from your system. Uh, Maze Ransomware and the Maze Ransomware group is probably one of the best known with its recent high-profile attacks, and I know I cover them pretty extensively in the daily episodes. It also has really set the tone of the modern ransomware that we see today, where data is extracted, and then when the ransom is not paid, the data gets published online in segments until an extortion fee is paid or someone else buys the data. Similar to Maze, you have Rebel, um, also referred to as the Sod Inc. Okibi, S O D I N O K I B I. It's similar to Maze, as there's a group of operators behind it, uh, and it also does the same kind of platform of it extracts data. You don't pay the ransom, they're going to extort the money out of you. Uh, Rebel scans the internet, though, it's looking for vulnerable machines to deploy the malware payload to deploy the malware play payload through VPN networks. Uh, they do some phishing, but really the main way Rebel gets deployed is for vulnerable machines that are sitting on the public internet. Um, Netwalker, a variant of the Mount Mail2, uh, targets home and corporate networks to extract and encrypt files it locates. Uh, Netwalker typically utilizes phishing emails to get the victims to open typically a VB script file that's attached to the email. So, you know, that's a lot of scary stuff. It's a lot of stuff that I've talked about throughout the last two months in the morning breaches. And there seems to be kind of, you know, that ongoing trend today of that ransom than extortion ransomware. And it's only getting more and more built into every strain of ransomware that's out there. Tomorrow's, though, are going to incorporate more artificial intelligence. So there's a lot of chatter in the dark web of, you know, different hacking groups looking for different ways to incorporate AI or that artificial intelligence. You know, one of the most common requests is, you know, how to circumvent face ID authentication. Uh, but another one that is pretty prevalent in the forums is using it for sextortion. So sextortion is already out there in the wild. You see it with those emails, hey, I know what you were doing last night, pay some money, or I'm going to mail this video to all of your contacts. You know, most people get that. It's just ignored. It's even blocked right off the bat by most spam filters. But tying in artificial intelligence and building out the directory of what people already have or just how public we post photos on social media, it allows now the AI to take pictures that it has and attach it to videos that may be legitimate videos. So you could have your face posted on a video and not be there. Uh, so it's really using AI to make it look like you're in a video when you're really not. Um, so it's really different things that are kind of building up. Uh, I think a lot of it is chatter, uh, but definitely by the end of the year, 
very real, very real concern, uh, seeing some AI kind of used. Um, and I think the end goal of all that is really, at the end of the day, how do you pressure the victim to pay the ransom? And if they don't pay the ransom, you know, it's that threat of that video is going to be sent to their contacts. And if the AI is able to make the video look realistic enough, then the people are going to question it and be more likely to pay that ransom. So that's kind of what I kind of see as, you know, the ongoing COVID as well as some new stuff coming out. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the recently reported cyber attacks. And we're going to start in South Africa. A telecommunications firm there, Telcom SA, suffered a ransomware attack around May 29th. Uh, it continues today to affect workers remotely as well as some of their services. Uh, Bernard's Township in New Jersey had its computer operations, including its website, impacted on May 11th through a ransomware attack, which as of June 1st, according to the mayor, uh, things are starting to return to normal. So neither of those could I find anything relating to which variant uh, was impacted or utilized, but I would fully expect both of those probably to have a breach notification requirement tied to them. Um, the Spanish e-learning platform 8Belt announced the data breach affecting more than 150,000 people across the globe. The breach originated from a misconfigured Amazon Web Services bucket and included full names, email addresses, phone numbers, dates of birth, country of resident, national ID numbers, Skype IDs, as well as the account details, course history, and even the student performance. Uh, I see this a dozen times a month where you think you're making the right move by going to the cloud, but then the company you hire or your IT department just goes with the default basic setting. And it's true with Office 365 or Microsoft 365. It's true with Microsoft Azure. It's true with Amazon AWS. It's true with any cloud platform out there. If you're just using the default settings, then you're not protecting your data the right way. The Manitoba Agricultural Services Corporation, MASC, notified clients after an attachment that included names and contact information of the agri-insurance clients were attached to an email by mistake, and it was sent out to 134 producers in the province. Now, that's an honest, honest mistake. Um, you know, trying to send something out, you click the wrong file. Um, regardless, that is a breach. Really, training employees to make sure they know what they're attaching open the file in the email, double check, triple check to make sure you're sending out what you mean to send. Uh, it also appears the personal data of apparently belonging to more than 20 million Taiwanese citizens, which really only has like 21 million total Taiwanese citizens, has appeared on the dark web. The three and a half gig database named Taiwan Whole Country Home Registry Database contained full names, postal addresses, phone numbers, government IDs, genders, and date of birth uh, in this database, and it was public. Um, so it was public for a short while, I think roughly a week, uh, but it does appear as of this morning, going back to the marketplace that it was in, it is no longer in that marketplace, so it looks like it was removed. One of the most common explanations of that is the person that was selling the data got the money that they were looking for and took the item offline. Uh, but today, I want to close out with a security bulletin. You know, a, there's a pretty serious VMware cloud director exploit in the market right now or being exploited right now. It's CVE 2020-3956. Uh, this could allow code execution remotely uh, within a cloud director platform, allowing an attacker to gain access and even control your private cloud and the entire infrastructure tied to it. So VMware has released both a workaround solution and a patch. Uh, the best way to find it or find more information, I'd go to VMware's knowledge base and search for KB79091. And as always, if you've learned something new by watching this, please take a few seconds and share the video uh, and like it too. If you want to see more episodes of The Morning Breach, you know, more information coming from me, please follow me, connect with me on LinkedIn, subscribe. Uh, and again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see everybody tomorrow morning back in the studio.